Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is monitoring, measurement, and feedback. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content. Check out the status bar for an outline of our agenda. And then make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our topic, monitoring, measurement, and feedback, comes directly from 1345 section 8.2.1. There is no direct link over into 820. However, it is partially covered by 820.100 kappa. Monitoring, measurement, and feedback in five words. Monitor feedback to improve devices. In this section, ISO requires us to document processes and procedures for capturing feedback from production and post-market areas. We are supposed to use that feedback as input into the risk management process, as well as identify areas for improvement. If the feedback that we capture identifies new or unexpected risks, we have to take appropriate action to address those risks. This is the part of ISO where they introduce the concept of post-market surveillance. It's important to note that in ISO, they're talking about feedback. We are using that feedback to understand our ability to fulfill customer requirements. This isn't just complaints. It's more than complaints. And just relying on, I have a complaint procedure, is not going to fulfill this requirement of 1345. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have a documented process for collecting feedback from my production and post-market areas. Second, I am actively analyzing that feedback and feeding it into the design process, the risk management process, and the CAPA process. And then finally, when new or unexpected risks are identified, I take action. I update my risk file and make any needed changes to my device or my processes to address those risks. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, I don't have a procedure for feedback. The only procedure that I have is the complaints procedure, and it doesn't outline the entire feedback process. Second, I'm only looking at feedback from either a complaints perspective or a post-market perspective, but I'm not looking at the full life cycle from manufacturing into the post-market. Third, if I'm identifying risks, new or unexpected risks, I'm ignoring them. And I'm not feeding that information back into my CAPA process, my design control process, or my risk management process. And now for those three bonus questions. Can you explain the feedback process? How is feedback used within the QMS? And then finally, what's the procedure number for our feedback process? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder for Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.